Hey everybody, Marcus C. Williams here. So a couple of days ago on Ackerman Street, um, in my district, a young lady's house was shot up. It was shot over 27 times. The sad part about this is she's got a family of eight. Okay, it's her, her husband, and her six kids. This is sad. She says, had she not been up at one in the morning, okay, tending to her kids with her husband, that they could have been dead, that she would have been dead. And she's fearful of everything that's going on in her neighborhood, and who wouldn't be, after having their house shot up like that. It's very sad. And since then, we have had, the next, matter of fact, the next day, another house was shot up. Her thing was, I'm not involved in any gangs. Me and my husband work. We don't do anything with anybody. It's about us and our kids. But still, their house fell prey to crime and violence. And this is a pattern that we're seeing more and more all across our city, especially in my district, and all across our state. We only have a couple of days left in session for the State Assembly and the State Senate in Albany. They're the ones who make the laws, who pass bail reform to let people out on appearance tickets, to pass less is more, to let people out early off of probation, off of um, parole and stuff like that. And right now we're hurting. We are a city under siege. We are at war. However, they have defunded our police, disincentivized policing, and demoralized the police. And on top of that, they're trying to pass all types of laws that make it more difficult for you to legally own a firearm in Rochester and in New York State. And it's very problematic. Right now, we need lawmakers to take action because we can't keep going on like this. You don't want the law enforcement out there, but you don't want to allow us to legally own firearms so that we could defend ourselves. The mayor himself said that the city residents should defend themselves themselves because we don't have any police because they got rid of them all. The police are hurting for recruitment, so I encourage any of you guys that want to see a change in the police force or want to protect your neighborhood to go out and apply for the police force. There's an upcoming exam in September, and if you sign up, they will train you for the physical prep, they will train you for the test prep, and they will help you get ready to succeed at this testing. So we've got to do something and it's got to be done different because the crime is outrageous, more stabbings, more shootings, and everything every day. They say that the guns are the problem, but it's not the problem. We know that. They're using extended clips and drums and barrel magazines and you can only have seven bullets in, in New York State or something ridiculous like that. You know, I, I mean, like you can't even really own a, any type of gun that's really going to be able to defend you as far as capacity or working properties. Like it's ridiculous. It's really bad. The policies that we have and the laws that we have in our state right now, and they need to be adjusted. We had a rally yesterday, which was Saturday to um, stand up to push for legislation to be changed because the, well, revised, right? Because they've got bail reform and less is more and they're not all terrible, but they need revision. And that's what we need. We need something different to be done because every day you turn on the TV, somebody's been shot, somebody's been stabbed, somebody's car has been stolen, somebody's been carjacked. There was a 10 year old, uh, yes, it was today, Sunday. There was a 10 year old yesterday who stole a vehicle and led the police on a police chase. What is this? Uh, the movie Cop Out with Bruce Willis and uh, Tracy Morgan? Like, this is real life, and people don't understand that these policies like bail reform and less is more, raise the age, and things like that are directly impactful on culture, especially criminal culture. If they see that people aren't being punished for crime, if they see that they can commit a crime and they go downtown and before they can even be processed by the police filling out the paperwork, they're re-released with just an appearance ticket, more crime is going to go and ensue. And other people outside that normally wouldn't be likely to commit crime see that these guys are not being punished for crime, so that makes them more likely to commit more crime. You guys, 
we deserve better and we deserve people that are going to represent us well. We really, really do. And we're not getting that right now. So I'm encouraging all of you guys that call your legislator, call whoever your assembly person is, call whoever your sen state senator is, because I believe it's June 2nd is the close of the session of legislation for this year. And if they close without that, we're going to be it's going to be a crazy summer if something's not done about the laws right now. It really, really will be. And they have this opportunity, but they don't seem to be taking it and they don't seem to care. And they keep telling us bill reform is good. Less is more is good. I don't know where they live, that they feel safe. But this mother's whose, whose house was shot up 27 times. There was a carjacking like five minutes ago. There was a shooting around the corner from my house last night. They're responding to another shooting down the street from me right now. People don't feel safe. The crime is everywhere. And it's because of the failed policies and the poor legislation that have been put into effect by our elected officials who do not seem to care to do anything different and want to stand their ground on these policies and laws which are adversely impacting our community and our state. So I encourage you all to reach out to your assembly people ASAP, to reach out to your senators ASAP. You can check out nysenate.gov or nyassembly.gov and you can check out where you can locate who your senator or assembly person is because this is out of control right now. It really is. And where I live in my district, the 137th assembly district, which is the biggest district in my whole city, covers about 70, 80 percent of the city. It's a war zone. It's a war zone. People are scared to go outside. I was at the park up the street earlier today and I left the park I hear a report on the scanner, large group of people fighting, um, refusing to disperse, need backup. Before I was doing this video a little while ago, we had multiple high priorities pending, okay, as far as my police area, and then the one just north of me, uh, they had more holding too. So we had like nine or 10, and they had like another eight or nine. Like, I don't even know what it was on the other side of the city, but that just goes to show you how serious and severe things are in our city right now. And it's not just here, it's all over the state, but my district is most harshly impacted. Um, you guys, I encourage you, reach out to them. And if they continue to do nothing, man, this November, November 8th, get out and vote different. Vote row B, because we are not able to continue to put up with nothing being done with a lack of representation and with people that are supposed to be our elected officials not actually doing anything that's benefiting us. They're out there serving their masters and the people who are backing them as far as financial go, but they're supposed to represent us, the, the constituents, the people who live in their district. And that's not what's happening right now. They've lost sight of what their job is and who they're supposed to be responsive to. And it's a shame because we deserve elected officials that will represent us. And that's a major reason why I'm running this year for the 137th Assembly District. And I encourage you all this year, when it's November 8th, get out and vote, vote different, vote Roe B. And tell everyone that you know, say, you guys, you know, with everything going on, we got to vote different, vote Roe B. Vote different, vote Roe B. That's what everybody needs to be saying this year. I'll catch you guys later. You be best, be blessed, be well. Catch you later.